You might like Spider-Man starring Hollywood's Tobey Maguire, but here's a bunch of people who hated it. <laughs> Gay. I got over it straight away. I don't think you intended to make this that clever. <laughs> but that ended up pretty damn clever. So congratulations for accidentally being clever. You witty bastard, not on purpose. Does whatever a spider can. I never saw him eating flies that we know of. Who knows what he's doing while he's swinging. <laughs> That's what the mask is for, it's a bug guard. I don't even know if that was funny, that was just like a, that, I, might, I, that I, might be accurate. You just Bill Nod that. <laughs> Too many movies made, just in general, stop it. Stop it, Hollywood. There's too many of these damn things. I don't like it. It's kind of stupid. Whatever, Quan. <laughs> Crappy. I didn't feel like Spidey. Yeah, because you're not Spider-Man. You're not supposed to feel like Spidey. And if that's your criteria for a movie, then unless it's a movie about your dumbass, you're never gonna like one. I thought it was terribly cheesy, and the Spider-Man is an unlikable crybaby. Who wrote this movie? Unlikable crybaby. You have to wait two more movies to get to that particular Spider-Man. <laughs> Who is a likable crybaby? Anne Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she cry in every movie? Les Miserables was an entire movie of her crying or cry singing. This movie was bad. Go see my version of Spider-Man that I shot with a camcorder in my backyard last week. It's much better. Well, you should have said come see the movie because no one can go see your crappy movie that you filmed in the backyard. If you're inviting us over, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> the best one of the three. The hype from the movie was better than the actual film. Be sure this wasn't for Fantastic Four? <laughs> Personally, Tobey Maguire revolts me and I think he's the worst and most annoying actor in Hollywood. Every film he touches turns to crap. And that's a superpower. Not like the films that he's in, just the ones he touches. So never hand him your Blu-rays, cause Citizen Kane will go to Citizen Kane in like two seconds. <laughs> it does once you find out it's only Rosebud. Yeah. Once you find out <laughs> oh, spoilers! <laughs> once you find out that that whole fucking movie is about a sled. It's about a sled and pointless as shit. Right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for not liking this film more than I should. It stays pretty close to the comics, which I did like, and the effects, though cheesy, are entertaining, but I can't stand Tobey Maguire. Apology not accepted on behalf of Tobey Maguire. Like, I have the opportunity to call him and <laughs> see if he accepts your apology. I don't know. Seen it. What don't you know? <laughs> Why would anyone go onto a website and type that? Bad, bad, bad equals shit movie. Here's one. Sure. <laughs> that math works out. Makes more sense than Common Core. Bad, 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 bad boys. You make me feel so good. You know you made me feel so good. You know you made me feel so good. <laughs> Toby Maguire has only one expression, and that goes for all of his movies. It's beyond me how he is continuously casted in movies. His acting is just as good as my singing, which is crap. <laughs> I don't care who likes Toby Maguire and who doesn't. I only accept all of this because you use deprecating yourself to make your point. Beautiful. <laughs> Not good. Tuesday afternoon film with your dinner lunch? What? <laughs> Is this about the movie or your burnt croissant? I'm so confused right now. How early are you eating dinner? <laughs> this movie is unbelievably cheesy. The acting in here is absolute S word. And Tobey Maguire bombs the role. It's painful to watch. I. I, I appreciate you censoring yourself, I guess. But you could have just said crap and not had to censor yourself. Unless you say C word for crap. But I'm pretty sure the C word is something else. OMG, this movie is terrible. The only reason why anyone liked it was we first saw the web head actually swing from skyscraper to skyscraper. But all in all, the movie was long, boring dialogues, cheesy acting, and jokes. And you can honestly tell you were on a set. It felt like you were watching The Evil Dead meet Xena with Spider-Man. 
A lot of romance with bromance and stalking. This makes Peter Parker seem like a nerdy creep. I always force myself to like this movie because it was my favorite superhero, but in all reality, it's not good at all. There's way too much dialogue and not enough action. Oh, and a lot of romance, bromancing and stalking. I only give it two stars because it was my favorite superhero and I like Toby too. He's cool, but if he ever plays my childhood favorite again, I'll hate H forever. Now he wants to take the lead in Robotech. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> like, I literally like went lightheaded reading this. I forgot where I was for a minute. <laughs> Stupid after a number of watches, but the initial watch was amazing. Can't be corny and a waste of time. I wish that rather than watch this movie, I had spent my time more productively by perhaps watching the grass grow or by playing in traffic. And if you play in traffic, you have a chance of Spider-Man rescuing you. Go give it a shot. <laughs> Fair enough. You're making like interesting points in this one. You're not even like making jokes. You're just like assessing the situation. This one was horrible. Goblin destroys the side of Aunt May's house. Goblin, say it. Aunt May. Those eyes, oh the terror. Goblin laughs. Scene lasts for a good three to five minutes. I want to gouge my eyes out. You'd still hear it. It really, and you just wrote the dialogue. It really wouldn't change that much. You'd still hear it. Except this time you wouldn't have your eyes for context. So enjoy that, you dumb bastard. <laughs> you might like Spider-Man 2 starring Tobey Maguire, but here's a bunch of people who hated it. <laughs> Tobey Maguire is still Spider-Man, and that's a pretty significant drawback. He's still Spider-Man? In like, the way that Wesley Snipes still thinks he's Blade? 2017 is when you wrote the review, and he's obviously not Spider-Man anymore. <laughs> hope the third is better. Well, I have some terrible news for you. It's like saying, I hope my 30s are better than my 20s. Getting so much of that sweet divorced ass. Nonsense. And missing the fun camp of the first one. Neat though. Meh. Better effects though. Wow. Hell of a roller coaster you just took me on right there. <laughs> this is shit, but it's all right. I really like it. Eh. Every other scene, do you love me, Peter Parker? Man, that sucked. Every other scene? Good thing you didn't watch the director's cut. It was every scene. Maybe the most overrated Spider-Man director and actor we've had. Not only does Tobey Maguire not suit Spider-Man, he lacks humor and lightweightness. Spider-Man is in the comics. He wasn't lightweighted enough? Are you fat shaming Tobey Maguire? Too much ham and cheese, but plenty of mayo. Pretty sure everyone in this movie is white. <laughs> <laughs> it has the same problem as the other two. Over the top acting, cheesy romance, and a main hero about as tough as a newborn baby. <laughs> Spider-Man's next villain. <laughs> Boss baby. Tobey Maguire is awful again. <laughs> New York Times says, Tobey Maguire was awful again. See Spider-Man 2, coming this summer. Once there were two villains in every single superhero movie, it just became too much. Can't focus? Is that your problem? You hate Marvel. I already know. Man, your brain is gonna explode for Infinity Wars. It's like Raimi just discovered CGI existed and was making up for lost time. That would imply there was no CGI in the first Spider-Man movie. There was plenty, like most of it. Just discovered CGI existed for the second time. A mediocre pile of shit. Taking that literally is really funny. <laughs> Fine, but look at that one. All right, the end is an embarrassment to society. Honestly, turn it off five minutes before it ends. That's just missing the credits. That's all that is. Don't get the hype. Spider-Man 2 just feels like another film. It is, it is a film, so it should feel like another film. Compared to other Spider-Man films and the recent Dark Knight trilogy, I don't think it can be compared. When I compare it to other things, there is no comparison. Absolute fucking garbage. I was 10 years old when I saw this, and even then I walked out of the theater pissed off over how terrible this movie was. We are spoiled bastards. <laughs> oh my god. The fact that we could have a guy in a suit like flying through a city like that and we walk out like, this is crap. Meanwhile, other people are like, I don't have water. Not what I was expecting. What were you expecting? I can't think of anything else. Is oh, Spider-Man. It's gonna be a, like, a romantic comedy, right? With Neil Patrick Harris. I don't 
no. These movies have some really great parts, and then there are some so tremendously poor parts that infect the rest like some sort of European plague. Is that different than other plagues? It's a very geographically specific plague you chose. Like, why wasn't it just a plague? Or AIDS? <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us while we make fun of these stupid reviews of Spider-Man 2. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit one of the videos that are on your screen to see another one, and until we see you next time, geek out and game on. You might like Spider-Man 3, but here's a bunch of people who hated it. Whose idea was it to cast the kid from that 70s show as the antagonist in, of this film? I want names. Uh, Sam Raimi, uh, Tobey Maguire might have had a say, uh, Steve. Absolutely disgusting. A f***ing dance number in the middle after being exposed to Venom? This is a f***ing rom-com through half of movie. Terrible casting of antagonists. Sam Raimi, F you. You said f***ing twice, why, why'd you censor yourself at the end? Did you just like have a change of heart? Tobey Maguire sounds like a pedophile whenever spoke softly. <laughs> wow. What, why do you know how pedophiles sound? Who are you hanging out with? Or are you just like talking in the mirror? I'm very confused. Want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man is gay. That's what you got from this? I don't think you know what gay means. I didn't know when Peter Parker becomes Black Spider-Man, he just likes to dance. <laughs> I mean, it's an awful scene, but this is also an awful sentence. And it's around act three when he dances. Now you know. What the f*** did I just watch? Spider-Man 3. And now you know. Starring a pedophile who talks softly. Want some candy? Some level the party while it's pumping, others clean up the next day. This movie deals with a lot of cigarettes in beer cans. What? Cool, dude. <laughs> a strange black entity from another world bonds with Peter Parker and causes inner turmoil as he contends with new villains, temptations, and revenge. That sounds pretty awesome, right? Wrong. This film will only leave you with deep emotional scars and the urge to punch Kirsten Dunst in the face every time you see her on screen. Yeah, but they can't promote it like that. Spider-Man 3, coming this summer. You'll want to punch Kirsten Dunst in the face. Funniest movie of the year. One star. The sarcasm. Dripping. Unless you're serious, and then why one star? Negative people just can't seem to figure out a rating system to save their life. If you look at it as a comedy, I guess then it deserves at least one and a half stars. One and a half stars. Apparently you looked at it as a comedy. So, what happens if you look at it as what it is? That's the rating we wanted. Venom looked like he did in the comics, and Kirsten Dunst is still looking attractive. Other than that, this film is a piece of poo. Piece of poo. So not like the whole strand, just like part of it. <laughs> not enough comic book, but plenty of movie. Exactly <laughs> which is, which is what it is. I'm done here. <laughs> oh God, emo Spider-Man haunts me. He does? Is he, is he dancing while he haunts you? Cause that's terrifying. Jumping the shark? I think they jumped the spider with this one. Well, that's less dangerous and way easier to do. It doesn't sound quite as bad as all at all. Like, they jumped a smaller, less dangerous animal. Worse than Batman and Robin. How dare you? <laughs> I'm just picturing spider nipples. That review was cold as ice. Just picture that in Arnold's accent and it'll be funnier. It burns not to give this a five. I love you, Spider-Man, but what was with all the crying? <laughs> it's like you're rating the best sex you've ever had in your life, but they just happen to have had an STD. You know, it just, it burns not to give you a five, but uh, but it burns. <laughs> How did it go so wrong? After such a promising start to the trilogy, why is he thrusting at people? You ought to be ashamed, Tobey Maguire. I mean, if he was actually thrusting at people, he should be f***ing ashamed. <laughs>
Wow. Thwip. <laughs> Worse than Daredevil. It is? I agree that it's hard to pick between the playground fight and the emo dance scene, but all of Daredevil felt like the playground fight. All of it. Totally f***ing bad. Peter Parker is emo and an egotist. He beats Mary Jane and Sandman cops out at the end. Eddie Brock was a weird bitch. It sucked. Anyone who liked this is dumb. Man, punctuation is not helping your case. And he beat Mary Jane? What movie were you watching? Uh, besides that, the guy who wanted Kirsten Dunst to get punched in the face loved it then. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is a turd. D minus. Correction, it's a piece of poo. Movie critic Ty Burr much prefers the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire over this crap. Uh, and that's fine, you just don't have to be a dick about it. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it. Now let's see what this idiot has to say. Is there a reason we need a new Spider-Man movie 10 years after Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire got it done properly? Did they? Also, need is a very, very strong word to be using for, like, a comic book movie. I need this. Wingmanning for a movie. I need this, guys. I need this. Just help me out. It's been a while. Only if you're Sony Pictures and the lawyers say you have to keep the movies coming or the rights will revert to Marvel Comics. So there was a need. Wow, you just answered your own damn question. Well played. That's correct. The Amazing Spider-Man is a contract extension, which is exactly how it plays on the screen. Dumbed down, tarted up. Tarted up? What does that mean? Tart like the flavor? Like a little tart. Like that? All I can think of is the, the flavor or the dessert. Both are good. <laughs> so... <laughs> and almost shockingly uninspired. It's the worst superhero movie since Green Lantern. I don't have memorized everything that came between Green Lantern and Amazing Spider-Man, but I feel like comparing Amazing Spider-Man to the Green Lantern at all is just wrong to do. Which is too bad because a lot of people, myself included, like Andrew Garfield and wish him well. He didn't like die or disappear. It's like a parent sending him off to college. You can see what they're trying to do here. Inject an aging property with a little Harry Potter DNA. Ew. Ugh. Andrew Garfield, I wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> Nor is that the only cross-franchise genetic enhancement, since the relationship between Gwen and Peter has been hotted up with as much tremulous twilight heaving as possible. I don't agree with that at all. I actually found their relationship to be more cute than like, CW breathy. <laughs> Plus, I feel like there was some emotion. <laughs> All that's missing from this Spider-Man is the lightning bolt on his forehead and some glitter. That's all that's missing from this movie? That's pretty good then. Pretty solid movie. If all you needed was glitter and a lightning bolt to make it passable, well done, Amazing Spider-Man. Gwen and a lot of teenage girls may be on Team Peter. Most of us will be on Team some other movie. You didn't even try to be clever there. There wasn't even an attempt. It's like if the people who made up the game basketball were like, oh, we just need a name. Let's just call it a uh, throw ball into hoop thingy. The game. I think it's gonna catch on. One day some asshole named LeBron's gonna show up and really bring it to the next level. But nothing in The Amazing Spider-Man holds water. It's the kind of movie where the hero can find his father's glasses, wear them for the rest of the running time, and never once wonder why the prescription matches. What? So it's a really rare movie because it's the kind of movie where this really specific weird thing that you described is an analogy. <laughs> So they really had a gem on their hands. This is a very original story, apparently. and only needs glitter and a lightning scar to fix all its problems. Not since 1981's Coming At Ya have this many things been thrown so witlessly at the camera. And when Spider-Man slingshots himself through a crane's metallic tower, you feel like you're watching a Six Flags cell phone video. I completely disagree, but setting that aside, if you go on YouTube and you look up Six Flags cell phone video, it probably has like 40 million views. Because anytime anyone takes any kind of video on a ride with people screaming and passing out and crap like that, it gets views. So someone's gonna watch this damn movie, even though it's missing glitter and a scar. Where's the pop grace? Where's the pulpy joy? There's no scene that gets close to Raimi's first Spider-Man movie, with the hero swinging ecstatically through forests of skyscrapers or hanging upside down for a makeout session with Mary Jane. So you didn't like the romance in this movie, but you liked the upside down makeout session. 
seems a little double standardy. the movie. Stone has been given a blonde dye job, and it seems to have muted her sass. <laughs> That's all it takes? Man, I would have definitely dyed some ex's hair in their sleep. There's little chemistry with Garfield's Peter, since the star has decided to go the James Dean route of misunderstood twitches and averted looks. The real Emma Stone could probably kick him into New Jersey. Interesting part though, she's an actress and she was playing a character, not Emma Stone. So it doesn't matter what the real Emma Stone would do because she wasn't herself, it doesn't say herself next to the credits. Do you not know how movies work? But it may be too much to ask for chemistry when the dialogue is this inert. Peter confessing all to Gwen. I've been bitten. Gwen dazzled. So have I. Which sounds straight out of a comic book, to be honest. The only one who gets a bit of topspin on his lines is Leary, who looks disgusted by the whole thing, which granted is his default expression. Yes, resting disgusted face. That's just what happens when you get older. Poor Iphens, one of the more eccentric talents to come out of Wales spends half the movie as a very ugly digitized lizard man. Yeah, cause cause he was he played the, the, the lizard like he played that character. You want him to just like show up on screen with a shirt that's like I'm supposed to look like a lizard, but I'm too good for this as an actor. Like what do you? <laughs> <laughs> the director is Mark Webb, whom the producers must have hired for his name. Crap, I knew you were gonna say that. I even paused to be like, he's gonna say this. I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna go like the most obvious insult that you could. Like, you certainly weren't, weren't hired by your talent. You are hired because your last name's Webb and Spider-Man has webs. They certainly didn't hire him because he made 500 Days of Summer in 2009, a charming little romantic comedy that is as far from a tentpole blockbuster as Marvel is from Shakespeare. I mean, they might have. They had a romantic element in this movie and there's a romantic element in that movie. Kind of made it like a teen thing. That was kind of a teen thing. It actually kind of makes sense to hire him for that. The only difference is he hadn't done a comic book movie before. And also every director that's directed a comic book movie at one point hadn't directed a comic book movie. I mean, Kenneth Branagh directed a comic book movie and he has directed many Shakespeare movies. He muffs the action sequences, can't get the romance started, and doesn't know how to use digital effects to create a cohesive alternate reality, the way Raimi or Christopher Nolan in the Dark Knight movies can do without breaking a sweat. Just keep in mind that you keep bringing up Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, directed by Sam Raimi, but Raimi also directed Spider-Man 3, and I feel like he failed on all accounts and probably broke a sweat because it sucked. <laughs> By the time we get to the film's climax, surprise, it involves a doomsday device with a ticking countdown placed atop a skyscraper. The cynicism of the whole enterprise has become unavoidable. I don't really find it that weird that villains in comic book movies are hell bent on destroying the world. It's kind of their MO, kind of what they do. The producers obviously think they only have to make a new Spider-Man and we'll show up. And sadly, they're probably right. That's still no excuse for this cash grab. The Amazing Spider-Man is isn't a movie, it's a mugging. <sighs> Just a reference to, to Uncle Ben. Everything that you've said in this review uh, has been poor writing and just like a bad joke. This is like the first clever thing that you've said. So way to end strong. Unlike Sam Raimi who made Spider-Man 3. According to movie critic Dana Stevens, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is old, tired, and adorable. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell next to it. Now let's see what this critic's got to say. The relatively fresh memory of that Sam Raimi Spider-Man can't help but lessen the purported amazingness of Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the second chapter of a drearily unnecessary franchise reboot that creaked into motion in 2012. It creaked in? Is it like the old version of Spider-Man? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's like old man Peter. <coughs> 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 Maybe every generation gets the Spider-Man it deserves, but must every micro generation? You're treating this like there wasn't the amazing Spider-Man. Like this is the sequel. You were supposed to bitch about this for the last movie. You're a little late, buddy. 
Here, pee on this. But there's no use shaking your fist at the heavens, or even more futilely at Sony slash Marvel, and demanding why the Spider-Man franchise needs to exist. Yeah, because they make a shit ton of money and they're not gonna listen to you. It does, and its existence provides for a few small pleasures. Even if the project as a whole conveys a drab sense of bureaucratic necessity, a let's get this over with wheeziness. He is old. <laughs> it's like, Spider-Man, we need you. With great power comes great responsibility. I'm dating Mary Jane. Now I use Mary Jane for my glaucoma. <laughs> Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, who have become an item in real life since the last movie, to the joy of the tabloids. Yay. Tabloids have feelings. Seem to interact with a charmed, charged space. When they flirt with each other, it feels real. <laughs> and that's the Spider-Man for my generation. The one that's good at flirting, having jiff wars with his girlfriend and waiting before they send an eggplant. It's not just a you up with them. It's a meaningful eggplant and two cherries with a, with a peach response. You guys put in the comments how Spider-Man would flirt via text message. That could have been the basis for a genuinely memorable romantic storyline, but Garfield and Stone aren't given enough good dialogue to speak. So they did this. Mm. I know what you meant. So you said their relationship felt real, but their dialogue sucked? What is a real relationship to you? Like, what, what is flirting to you? Like, I enjoy your facial structure. They tend to trade lovey-dovey compliments rather than screwball comedy barbs. It's as if there was a script meeting where someone threw up his hands and said, eh, just let them be cute together. I feel like you're reviewing a movie called The Amazing Peter Parker. When are we gonna get to the Spider-Man stuff? In a scene in which Peter pries a painful family secret out of his beloved Aunt May, a very good Sally Field, as opposed to a shitty one. <laughs> like, I'm casting a new movie. Bring me the good Sally Field. You, get the f out of here. You're the sh Sally Field. <laughs> Way too late in the film, Paul Giamatti lumbers onto the screen in a dinosaur-like suit of mechanical armor as the fearsome yet curiously adorable Rhino. You think everything in this movie's cute. Cute relationships, even with the sh dialogue. Cute little mechanical Rhino. Why wasn't Sally Field cute? She was just good. It's a throwaway action scene clearly inserted in order to tease the next Spider-Man movie. And strangely enough, for this capes and tights weary viewer, it kind of worked. Okay. Oh, there's more. Paul Giamatti can get me into the theater to see almost anything. Call it a superpower. Or the fact that he always carries a gun. That's not true. I'm just picturing Paul Giamatti being like, you're seeing Magic Mike. I don't want to see Magic Mike. You're seeing Magic Mike, mother you're seeing it. Okay, okay, Mr. Giamatti. And you're gonna like it. You're gonna be Boner Fest 98. Movie critic Roger Moore saw Spider-Man Homecoming and all he could think to himself is, where's Andrew Garfield? He was so much better. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it. Now let's see what this dumbass critic has to say. Give it up for Marvel imposing its will on Sony for the third Spider-Man incarnation in living memory. Okay. Now what? They don't repeat the origin story this time. Change up the age of the title character and give him the ADHD energy that the unseen radioactive spider bite made worse, not better. ADHD energy? We are definitely over-diagnosing that. He's just being a kid. Leave him alone, bastard. In Spider-Man Homecoming, he's manic, 15 and breathless. <laughs> Manic 15 and Breathless is just the douchebag who works at Hot Topic who has asthma. Battling his hormones and digging an older teenage girl, one seemingly out of his league. Battling his hormones. Weird Spider-Man villain. <laughs> Spider-Man versus underarm hair, sweat, and boners. Random boners. Uncle Ben isn't in the picture, and Aunt May has morphed into Aunt Milf. <laughs> it's, wouldn't it be Aunt I'd like to f like elf? Isn't that what it would be? Like she doesn't she doesn't have a kid. She has a nephew. So it's Elf. The Chatterbox character and the film are earnest but lightweight, making for a movie that lacks gravitas, romance, fear, or zing. You went all over the place with your adjectives there. <laughs> it just sounds like some asshole asking a girl on a date, like I promise you tonight, gravitas, romance, fear, and zing. The zing is my penis inside you, combined with just a little bit of herpes. 
For young Mr. Holland's opus, I get it. <laughs> All right. At least he's not Andrew Garfield isn't enough. I don't know, that's plenty for me. <laughs> that's pretty good. The next Batman is definitely gonna be able to be at least he's not Ben Affleck. And that's gonna be enough. It's like eating shitty pizza and being like, at least it's not kale, that's enough. Aunt May doesn't know Peter's secret, but his plump nerd pal Ned finds out. That's just mean. Like, calling him plump added nothing to that sentence at all. Except, like, you just becoming a larger dick with a small dick. <laughs> There are, of course, multiple levels of Marvel fandom, but only two will suffice for talking about Homecoming. There are those who squeal with glee at every tie-in character who makes a cameo, every new costume introduction, and those who silently roll their eyes and mutter, yeah, and? Guess which camp I'm in. I guess you're in the camp where you get to just come in, hate something that everybody else loves, not like references, and just be ready to like shit on Marvel, and you just start pitching a tent. And I'm shooting for as many boner jokes as I can in this video, because there's been like four. And being in that latter group, I want something with more human qualities than the pandering piffle aimed at those who like the extended soap opera that the studio is ever engineering. You wanted more human qualities? The thing that carried this entire movie was when Peter Parker was just being Peter Parker. It was probably the most human Spider-Man. And I'm starting to think you're the type of person who needs either a musical number or someone getting a hand job on a beach for you to like the movie. I'm just assuming he liked La La Land and Moonlight. I don't know. And wanted Spider-Man to somehow be La La Land and Moonlight, which would be amazing. <laughs> Spider-Man fighting the vulture while singing and getting a hand job on a beach. Gold. But they've utterly lost the plot when it comes to plot. And gravitas. It's as if they packed 10 movies worth in Logan because whatever energy Homecoming delivers in some, not all, its many scenes has no weight. Zero. Wait, so you liked Logan? and somehow wanted Spider-Man to be like Logan. That's like expecting your boyfriend to be just like your gay best friend. It's not gonna happen, Karen. I'm not anything like Bruce. It's cute, never more than that. And sometimes that's enough. Look at Kirsten Dunst. Give Michael Keaton one great scene to make his natural menace felt, and then make that moment all talk and know violence has consequences. Would it have been better if he was mute and just like had a knife that he stabbed people in the eyes with and was also racist? I don't know why. I threw that in. <laughs> Introduce a high school bully. Okay, this is Steve. And make him a non-threatening shrimp. A mean girl in boy form. Okay, this is Stephanie. Jaunty montage is set to vintage pop and punk. Blitzkrieg bop by the Ramones. Make the effects driven action beats play even if they're beyond repetitious at this point. It's funny that the only reason the action worked is the Ramones. You know what? I like the Ramones, so I'm gonna give you this one. Marvel can take a bow for making the film's multiculturalism stand front and center. From interracial friendships and romances, to multiracial gangs, and the Japanese-American school principal whose World War II Nisai uniform dad's photo figures prominently on his desk, bookending the gym teacher whose detention hall is postered with James Baldwin and Frederick Douglass images. That's another, yeah, okay, and? Yeah! It sucks to give movies and characters depth. We should have the principal the entire time be in a white room with nothing in it. And make him white too, that'll be better. And then the gym teacher this isn't even in a gym. He's just like sitting in a chair and saying nothing. No pictures of Frederick Douglass or even a person named Douglass. Unless it's Doug from Nickelodeon's Doug. I don't know where I'm going with this. I think that you're stupid. How about that? But pretending this is anything other than pleasant time killing filler for the next Marvel Marvel is laughable. Yeah, but it's just wasting your time and keeping you occupied until the actual thing happens. It's like foreplay. Final. Lick your nipple and stuff. When are we getting to the three minutes of crying and shame? Changing up the story removes some of the onus of comparison to the first Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Not when it comes to romance, suspense, guts, and heart, however. So like nothing? <laughs> Changing everything changed nothing. It's like someone who gets plastic surgery and is still ugly. It's like Charlie Sheen after rehab, who still needs rehab. Even the not late, not lamented Andrew Garfield Spidey brought some of that to the table. Well, now you're saying that you like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man more than this Spider-Man. You're kind of alone in that one, buddy. Way to be a damn rebel. I mean, maybe if you liked the Ramones when the Ramones weren't cool. 
<laughs> I'm just picturing you doing this about everything. Hey, you wanna get some ice cream? Ice cream sucks. What a beautiful day. I prefer rain and being covered in bees. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it. And until we see you guys next time, geek out and game on.